Hey everyone, Arbor617 here with another little Minecraft Blender tip. Today we'll be looking at a cool water shader. So when I was working on survival games, I was like, okay, we're going for a little more cinematic look. I didn't really want that kind of flat blue Minecraft feel. I wanted it to look a little more reflective. Also, we had a scene where he jumps into the water. I didn't really want to show him going underwater, so I was like, let me actually kind of make it not transparent and I'll just kind of make it more reflective. So I ended up creating this shader that looked a little more cinematic. It doesn't work in all cases, but um, if you're going for a little more darker, interesting look, it definitely does work. One thing that's nice about this water is also it can be animated, so rather than the water just kind of sitting still, you can make it look like there's kind of wind moving across it. So here's a good scene where you can really see the water in action. We'll be looking at this to see how it was made. Um, one thing I might be doing in this little tip episode is I don't think I'll be really showing you bit by bit how I did it because two reasons. One, honestly I don't really know exactly what I was doing. I was just kind of fiddling around before I kind of got the effect I wanted. Um, and second of all, I just don't feel like making this very long. I'm working on a bunch of other things. So I'm going to select the water. Actually let me go back to, um, let me let me turn on MC prep and prep it back to how it was. So here's your initial water just to kind of see through water. Um, and so what we'll be doing is not that complicated. Here we go. So here's the default water. And I ended up just kind of scrapping almost all of this. I don't think I left any of this behind. I just started a whole new shader thing. So let me go back to my um my water shader. Did it really uh okay. Apparently it deleted my shader when I did the MC prep. Okay. Anyway, so here's the new thing I invented. Um and when working with these kind of things, it's good to uh you know, you'll be wanting to obviously go in rendered mode, so you can kind of watch it. So let's actually start deleting some of these um, nodes here, so we can kind of see bit by bit. Okay, so first what I did, I have a little bit of a diffuse and a little bit of glossy. And if you don't know about shaders, basically diffuse is just kind of like flat plastic look, um, and then glossy is, you know, your shiny metal stuff. So if I go between zero and something like this, it'll mix between the diffused kind of flat and then the shiny kind of reflective. I think it gave it a little bit of roughness so it wasn't, you know, completely still looking, kind of smoothed it a little bit. Um, but rather than just controlling, you know, some somewhere in between, we wanted to get like the wave feel. We wanted like the wave effect. And um, of course there is like an ocean modifier, but that really slows down render times. And I was like, I want to have good, you know, cool water looking reflections without killing my render time. So back to good old noise texture. If you remember my um, my enchantment effect tutorial, we used noise texture to get the kind of noise effect on the sword. So we'll be doing that again here. Um, but we want to control, so we want to control a lot of different things like the reflectiveness, the um, the shininess, the, the, I even used a bump thing. So we'll be kind of recreating that now here. Uh, so what I did too, you're gonna bring in like a little noise texture. Let me see if I just, if I just bring in the noise, you get this kind of weird thing again where it's all, it's all colorful, you, you know, you get all that weird color stuff, we don't want that. So then you're going to run that through a desaturation to just turn it to be black and, oh whoops, I can't do what I'm, I'm used to normal compositing nodes, not being here. So if you run it through a desaturation, it brings out all those weird colors, so we just want like a black and white image of kind of noise. And then I played a bit with the contrast and made it more um, like so. So you get these kind of, you can already see these are going to be where like the waves are going to be. Um, oh, and to the left of the, oh, you can actually ignore that for now. Oh, and with the noise texture, I play, play around these values a lot, obviously. You'll want to try different things, you know, here's 100, here's 200, you get like kind of different size ripples. Here's a lot more ripply water. Ripley is kind of believe it or not, but if we go over here, we can um. So then we want, we'll rather than um just plug into the color, what we're actually going to be using this for is controlling the height of our bumps of our bump map stuff. Um, and then our bumps go into the normal, the glossy, I believe, as well as no yeah, and then the brightness and contrast goes into the factor. I think. Yes, okay, that's what it was. So that's basically what I did. And that pretty much got it working. So to kind of re-go over, now that I've kind of hooked up a bunch of stuff, 
um, we have this noise texture is controlling two things. It's controlling whether or not something should be diffuse, like right here, or reflective, like on the edges of the waves. It's also controlling this bump node, and the bump node is creating like the kind of glossy reflections so the light kind of shines across them. Um, and then, so I have all that. In fact, let me actually go out to the water real quick. So this is a little better example where you can really see the way the, the, the light kind of bounces off and creates those little ripples. Um, and we can, we can, the bump, if I turn the bump off, you'll see that, okay, yeah, we have our, you know, it mixes between the diffuse and the glossy, that's nice but we don't get that nice, um, the glossiness doesn't kind of sh get that there, it kind of feels almost like 3D, it kind of bends it and stuff and adds a nice extra, um, extra bit. See, out of curiosity, I'm curious what happens if I plug this in here, it doesn't seem to really change much. Anywho, um, that's basically the water shader, how it looks. We'll get to animation part in just a second. You can also, I added this transparent in case at the very end you wanted to kind of do another mix and then maybe like mix it with some transparency. You can make it a little bit see-through. I didn't want to do that because it, you know, it caused problems. You can see on the map actually and stuff. So I didn't, you know, have any transparency for this one. Um, so the very last step now, once you want to animate it, this is actually probably the worst part. You know, just just setting up this little stuff to to do this was pretty easy. So then we're gonna want these mapping and texture coordinates. Again, you can add all these nodes by doing Shift A and search for it. Um, and then we're going to be keyframing this value, these the positions. So we'll like set a keyframe at frame zero. Then you want to go for like all the way to, like the end of your animation or something, and then set another keyframe. It doesn't take much. For example, this is only you know it, after two thousand frames, it only goes like point two and point zero eight. Um, and the reason I say this is kind of the hardest is because there's not really a good way to preview it. You know, if I'm in material mode, you can't see the water at all. You have to be in the rendered mode to see it. So you kind of just have to, you know, step through frame. Frame, you have to kind of almost have like, what, you, what I usually end up doing is I'll render a frame, then I'll render a frame like five frames later in another slot, then another one five frames later in another slot. You kind of just keep rendering different little frames and kind of playing them back and seeing about how far it moves in so much time. Um, and then you'll end up rendering and finding out like, wow, the water moved way too fast. I need to slow that all down. So it's a little bit annoying, but once you get it good, it seems to work. What I actually did is this. Once I had my water set up nicely, I created an empty scene where I had my water shader in action. This is actually the, the water that was used in um, at Jerry the Slime part three. I was like, okay, the water shader is already set up, it's already animated. Let me actually just save this into just like a random empty scene called water shader. That way from now on, whenever I want um, my cool water shader, I can just, I can go to file, append, and I can actually append the water shader out of the scene. If you want to play around these colors, you can change a lot of these kind of, the diffuse values is the one you're going to get the kind of most interesting results. You can make it more bright, you know, you make it kind of shiny looking water. Um, and again, this isn't the most realistic water. I, I see kind of little gray patches where it looks kind of bad. Um, I don't know if I can like... Yeah, you can, you can play around with it. Um, I just found that it was it was certainly better than the um, just the default blue Minecraft water. Especially for scenes like survival games. Anywho, sorry this one was kind of clunky. Um, I kind of ran through this tutorial fast, I didn't really show you me putting it all together. And like I said, I didn't really know what I was doing at first. I was like, let me just, you know, start plugging these things in one at a time, start mixing them, using different things. And then just kind of, this is just what happened in the end. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, see this one even has a little transparency mixed in. Um, so, hopefully you learned something from this. Once Again, once you set this up once, just save it into an empty scene called like Water Shader, name it name the material water shader, then from then on you can always just append the water shader straight into your new scenes. Um, and again, it, this renders mega fast compared to the uh, ocean shader. So, hope this helped. Um, keep leaving comments on what more little tips you'd like to see next. I have a few planned. However, two of my tips I have planned 
are very big tips. One of them is the particle tips, which I've been getting from the very beginning, I still haven't done it. And the other one is a whole bunch of little tips on things that make your workflow a little bit faster, and just make using Blender a lot easier that most people don't know about. However, both of these tutorials I was thinking about doing on the main channel on Black Plasma Studios, because they're they're not just little you know side tips here and there, they're actually pretty darn big important things that everyone who's doing animation in Blender should probably find out. So I'm kind of holding off on those until more like during the fall when we're not releasing so many animations and I can kind of release one then. Um, but again, let me know what other tips you'd like to see here. And until then, see you next time.